Yeah, so I'm like at my neighbor's house. I just dropped by the, these next door neighbors and they're kind of like the new hippies, you know, they're, you know, from the city and they're always having ceremonies and shit, but they don't seem to get that much work done. Anyway, that's kind of almost irrelevant, but I was talking to one of the guys and he's, he's kind of like the one with the most skills, like he can use a chainsaw and stuff like that. We were talking about axes and he's like, oh yeah, axes. And I'm like, YouTube axes, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, you know, I watched, um, a lot of Wrangler Star videos, and then I went and I bought $600 worth of Wetterling's axes. <laughs> and uh, he got like, you know, three or four different ones and like all the different sizes that he might need for different uses and stuff. And it's like, yeah, he's just like, you know, I, wa I watched all these videos and I went and did a bunch of research on the internet and I, you know, he ended up spending any, you know, he kind of was communicating, I think, some buyer's remorse. Um, and then he's like, yeah, and I, I don't use them. I haven't used them. I, I don't know how to use them, really. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. This is a phenomenon. There's a big kind of like gearhead culture on the web where gear is almost like more the point than using the gear. So I'm like, yeah, you know, that happens. And what you should do, I, I hope I told them what I'm gonna tell you which is you should get a cheap ax and use it. I'm gonna make an argument that you should not buy an expensive ax if you're a novice. Now, I'd just like to say before I go into that, another disclaimer, is that if you don't need to hear this from me, and you, you don't need this, then I'm not talking to you, and that's, that's cool. I'm talking to what is still the majority of people, um, pro I assume, that are watching my ax -like content, related content, and do need to hear this because it's uh, perfectly understandable that you can go and consume a lot of information and find all this information and you think about it and stuff like that. But if you don't know what is and isn't important, it's easy to get sucked into all these details and upsold. Like the people on these forums will just kind of upsell you, just like a natural process where you'll get sold up higher and higher on the ladder until you were going to get the council and then you're gonna get the halts and then you know now you're gonna get the grand scores and it costs way more but you're like it's the best you know it's the best what do you want tell me this why do you want an expensive axe if you are comparing ages like uh, the age of a person to your experience level with an axe where are you at on that spectrum you know if I was like for me um, I'm at a low level when it comes to driving. Say, you know, I can drive, but I'm not a race car driver, you know? I wouldn't, if you put me on a, if I was like, dude, I wanna learn how to drive a race car. Um, I go to the racetrack, what am I gonna do? Hop in like a $100,000 race car and start racing? No, I'm gonna get in a, you know, a beater, a jalopy or a, just a souped up regular car or something and, and practice for a while. I can tell you, you know, reasons you don't want an expensive axe, but let's just look at it from why do you want this axe? Why, how, how have you talked yourself into spending $200 on an axe that you really don't really know how to use? And again, if you, if that's not you, I'm not talking to you and that's fine. And I don't mean to belittle you for not knowing how to use an axe. That's totally fine. Totally fine. Because I didn't either. I mean, no one does. You don't come out of the womb knowing how to use an ax. That's my analogy. Why do you want an expensive ax? Okay, it's gonna stay sharp longer. It's better, you know, it's this, it's better steel. So what? So what? Um, the softest ax I've ever used is this. And I cut a whole bunch of firewood with it last year. And yeah, I mean, I was like, oh, well, it seems like I have to sharpen this a little bit more. Guess what? It's really easy to sharpen. I never noticed ever that I had like any significant decrease in my productivity by using this soft axe. You know, it's soft enough that I dinged it and it bent instead of breaking and I was able to hammer some of the, the dings back out. I'm gonna weaken this metal by stress by essentially, you know, the equivalent of bending it back and forth. If that happens, again, I'm pretty much at the same place that I would be if I just started grinding this out. So hey, why not? Yeah, so that looks pretty good. There's definitely gonna be a little nick there, but it's, it's pretty small. 
So hopefully you can see what that looks like now. Um, it looks better. It looks like if I sharpen it, there's barely going to be anything there, really. Like, <laughs> and even draw the steel out with a hammer and like carefully draw the steel out to stretch it back out to fill in the gap left where a piece of steel chipped off when, when it didn't bend back that way. Okay, well that broke off. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can actually draw this out slightly, believe it or not. Well, I lost a little bit of the metal, um, but I would say I'm still ahead of the game. I like this ax head. I might haft it up and use it some more. Who cares? It's not gonna hold an edge. Like, if I took, you know, one of these budget line council boys axes, had this reproduced exactly by insert, you know, expensive fancy ax company name of your choice, and I took one and used it for one day and used another one the next day and then this one and then that one, you know, I seriously, seriously doubt that I'm gonna notice a large drop in my productivity of producing, getting work done. I mean, this is what it's about, right? Is getting work done or, or is it, maybe it's not. If it is, who cares? You know, it's like this holds an edge fine, well enough, touch it up once in a while if you need to, get on with it, get some work done. Who cares? Is it better? Yeah, it's better. That's great. You know, if the thing holds an edge longer, that's awesome. That's awesome. Later. Get that later. Get that later when you're ready for it. It's less likely to break because, quote from Hultaforce, the steel is stuck, struck several times, you know, thereby making it stronger. Broken axes are very rare. Like, even with mild, you know, moderate abuse, let alone just regular use. Like, how much of a premium are you going to pay for your first axe or, like, an early axe to, to really get, you know, practiced on for maybe breaking it? Who cares if you break it? You know, this axe is 30 bucks. You know, there's a good chance you could put together an axe for less. Who cares if it breaks, you know? Um, I broke the corner off of one of those. I'm not sure why. It might have been a knot. It might have been because the steel isn't up, you know, up to snuff. So what? So what? You know, I just filed it back until it was sharp enough. I go on with my work. So what? Is it good? Yeah, that's awesome. You know, if we can get a better steel that's less likely to break and is going to stay sharp longer, that's awesome. I'm all about it. And if you could produce that cheap and everyone could afford it, yeah, I mean, why not? Why not? But that's not the world we live in. And also, cheap, inexpensive doesn't mean bad. There's piles of old axe heads out there waiting to be stuck on handles and put to use. Like good, high quality, you know, from American and European manufacturers. It holds its resale value. Not if you fuck it up because you don't know how to use it. Not if you take a file to it to fix it up and scratch it too much. Not if you do what you should do with almost every ax on the market right now, and whip out a knife or a spoke shave or a rasp or all three, and shave that handle down. You know, the most expensive axes out there almost all have very thick handles, hickory handles that, in my opinion, just need to be shaved down. Just to be highly functional and at their best, they need to be. What do you think my neighbor is gonna say, you know, if he hands me his his like Wetterling, expensive Wetterlings axe, and I'm like, dude, you know, I'm whipping out my knife, right? And I'm like, hey, dude, let me uh, shave that thick ass handle down. He needs to lose some weight, you know. He's gonna be like, uh, wait, that's really expensive, and yeah, he's probably gonna say no, maybe not. We'll think about it. Let's think about it. No, don't think about it. Get a cheap axe. Grab a knife, scrape that sucker down, experiment. Scrape it too much, make it too thin, break it, who cares? It's a cheap ax, get another one, that's part of the journey. Don't learn that on an ax that's worth a lot of money because it's it, that resale value is gonna go down.
They're handmade. That's cool. It's awesome. It's sexy. I like it. Get it later. Get it when you're ready for it. You know, get it later. If it's just, you know, if, if that whole thing and the fact that it's like sexy because it's hand forged or something like that is important to you and it's more like the collecting and all that well i can't really argue with that too much but if you want to use it if you want to be you know an axe user and be good at it then starting with the i don't want to say ferrari but <laughs> insert um pretty damn expensive sports car of your choice you know if you're you just got your learner's permit start with a we'll get you a honda civic like mine you know You know, why are you really buying this? Is it a status thing? Did you, or were you convinced that you need these things out of an axe? Is it uh, retail therapy? Lots of people use retail therapy trying to make themselves happier. Seems like it's gonna fill that void, but of course it never really does, you know? Um, my life's shitty. I could sit here and, and go off on the sucky things about my life. But, you know, I strive not to use retail therapy to try to fix that because it doesn't work. And there's all kinds of other reasons not to do that. Just really ask yourself honestly, why do you really want that axe? Is it just a bauble that you want? What are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to use it? Because honestly, if you're just a beginner axe user, you shouldn't use it. You know, if it's that nice or if you care that much about how nice it is, or if you want it to hold its resale value or whatever, you should be using that later, you know, once you get some experience. Get a cheap axe and use it. You know, beat it up. You're gonna you're gonna nick the blade, you're gonna stick it in the dirt, that's fine. It happens. Doing real work out in the woods, it's gonna get messed up. You're gonna break handles. A handle has to be considered somewhat of a consumable item. You know, especially for, for someone who's just getting started. You're going to break handles. You're going to smack that thing. You're going to go to cut limbs off of a tree, and you're going to smack that handle against limbs. Just smack. Smack. It's going to break, and hopefully the whole thing won't break. It'll just get messed up here. You know, you're going to hit it sideways, and it might just go this way. You're going to use too much force. You're going to miss when you're trying to split stuff and just boom. Slam that handle right here crack later who cares it's a cheap axe what are you gonna do you know are you gonna make a handle that i think that'd be great by the way are you gonna order another one at a premium price of what what are they sixty dollars or something i can't imagine they're cheap to get that re you know specific replacement handle for your forged swedish axe if it's available at all wherever you live here's another one but I'm going to get it now, and then I'll practice, and then I'll get better, and then I'll use it. Well, do you know what you want? Do you know which axe you want? Because that might take some time for you to figure out. Just get cheap axes and use them. Buying stuff will not make you happy. It might give you a, a, a short thing where you're like, oh, I, got, I, I ordered my axe, I did it, and it's coming in the mail, and then you're going to get it, and then you're going to have it for a while, and you know the novelty will wear off. It's not like every time you pull out that axe and look at it, you're gonna have that new axe feeling. <laughs> don't do it until you're ready. If you know you're ready, then you know I don't need to be talking to you about it. And that's not my intention. And it's not my intention to belittle you or make you feel dumb or bad about choices you were thinking about making <laughs> or choices that you've made beyond the, the extent to which that's useful. It's all good, as they say here in NorCal. <laughs> so what should you do? Um, my top recommendations are get an old vintage head. They can be really cheap, like um, Adam West just sent me this one to put on this handle to give away to you guys, which I'll do later. And he's like, yeah, I got that for five bucks at a flea market. This thing's great, you know, it's pitted. It's got pitting all over. It was laying on the ground on this side, you can tell, because it's more pitted. It's laying on the ground outside. You know, put an edge on it, the little grinding. It needs some work on the cheeks. Good to go. Five bucks. You know, his handle, I think his boy's axe handle is 19, but it's like, there's also shipping, which is quite a bit. So it might be like 30 bucks total. 
30 and 5, 35 bucks for probably a killer axe. This is 30 bucks and you might not get a good handle. This is probably a better head than this. These heads are perfectly serviceable for me. I did have uh, the guy at Omaha Knife said he stopped carrying this line because they were having uh, inconsistency and quality issues. I haven't, uh, I've only used, really used one. So one of those two, I can't tell you what to do in Europe, like what's, what's the good budget line axe. In America, this is the only company I know that really hasn't just sold out the brand. And is, you know, the other brands are just running themselves into the dirt on the name. You know, they're, they're capitalizing on the name. Companies do this all the time. Someone starts a company, they build a reputation, they sell out, someone buys the name, or, or they keep the name and they just outsource and make complete junk and just run it into the ground until finally everyone's like, oh yeah, those are crap after buying millions of them to figure that out, you know. So, yeah, that's my recommendation, one of those two things, and um, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You're supposed to be more afraid of me. Yeah, there you go. That's the idea. If you're a buck, you'd be headed for my freezer right now. Yeah. You don't know what I'm saying, do you?